did not protect us, nor did MTA protect us. And what I mean by protecting us is taking a large part of our um, job function away from us, by not giving us PPE, and by denying us the opportunity to be able to use PPE for the way it looked to the public. So now we're asking you to back us and bring the cash back and continue to let us move our comp this company forward. Thank you. That, okay, that's thank that's you. really strong. And thank you guys um, so much for everything. And uh, definitely, guys, um, I know you're running for union president. Yeah. So did you want to say something to all your MTE family and employees about the election and about your campaign real quick? Yes, well, everyone knows by now. My name is Evangeline Barrios. I'm a candidate for president of CW Local 100. Um, my campaign is about the unification and organization of CW Local 100. I'm doing this for our members, for our family, for our city, and for us to have a secure future. Um, we just have to continue to keep putting our messages about, um, out there. Our local has to continue, the members of our local has to continue to unify. Um, we just call on everybody just to be engaged. Know the issues um, that, we are, 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 um, that we are fighting towards and what we're working towards. Um, and I'm gonna be, I'm looking forward to serving you all. Um, elections should be happening this November 15th. Make sure that your name is updated, your dues are paid up so that you'll receive a ballot. And you know you'll see me in the field. I'll still be out meeting with you guys every day. I want to meet as many members as I possibly can so that I can understand what it is that you, the people, need. Right? This is not about me. It's about all of us, our members, our family, um, our city, and a secure future. Thank right. you. And one thing I do want to say, you know the new elected officials that are going to be in the city council? They're talking about privatization, the city running the MTA. And we all know that's a really bad idea. You know Nice Bus in Long Island, Transdev, uh, runs Nice, Nassau Intercounty well, Express. The likelihood of New York City running the MTA is highly unlikely. The reason why is this is a huge cash cow. The MTA makes up 10% of the national budget, right? And so the governor is not going to give up that type of, of, of purse um, to the city to, to run. So we really don't have so much have to worry about privatization at this point, and especially with us being a unionized workforce. That's why it's so important for us to understand the importance of organized labor and what it means to the city, right? And so by doing that, we can sort of circumvent privatization but it takes the the the, um, the organized labor community to really pull together so a lot of employees are getting assaulted on the subway we keep hearing stories every day of you know uh, concrete bricks being thrown at station agents and all of that if you're elected president how what would you do differently than what local 100 is doing now I would demand accountability that's number one right and not only accountability but I would myself have to have meetings with the, the, um, the police commissioner and the commissioner of, um, of the, the NYPD Transit Bureau, right? To understand what is their plan for deployment of police in our system. I would also push to end this two-tier system that we have, of which, is, which I call the tale of two cities, where you have the MTA police that police the, the Long Island Railroad and the Metro North. And we have the Transit Bureau, which used to be an independent agency, but that's now been merged with the NYPD, right? Which deals with, which takes away funding and resources and a lack of accountability and oversight. So I would ensure first that, that public safety and the, the, the entities, the institutions that are supposed to protect our members, that there is a real plan, that they understand how our system functions and that the police um, are trained adequately, and I would definitely push to have the MTA police become a part of New York City Transit, so that we would have just one system across the board, and the, the, um, the New York City Transit Bureau, you can still have it, but the, the, the um, onus of protecting our workers would come from the MTA police. And, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen private contractors on the MTA facilities. Mm -hmm. um, so some of them are cleaning the subways and stuff like that, and they're being paid less than minimum wage. Some of them are in bad working it's conditions. Shame. It's anti-union. Yes. Everything that's happening right now is anti-union. 
GW Local 100 should have a big rat in front of it, right? For being a scabby, right? For union busting, farming out of our work, everything that's happening, the fact that we have contractors everywhere. And if you look at the condition of the people who are working, the fact that we are such a strong labor union and that we would allow those conditions for any worker, right, means that we are no longer invested in what the tenets of what unionism is. Right? And so to see our workers protected who clean the system, but then you look on the platform and you see people working without the proper PPE, without health care. Um, they have um, varying wages, right? Somebody could be making $20 an hour, another could be making $15 an hour, right? And so there's no protection for workers, period. Not to mention also when you think about the capital funding that they do and that um, Local 100 has allowed for so much of the farming out of our work, that right now our workers only have in the Department of Maintenance away, only have work guaranteed until the end of this year. Yep. So this is anti-union across the board. There is never supposed to be a time when contracted work that is not um, that is not unionized is allowed to be a part of our system um, in any way. And if we do allow it, um, if, they, if, if there have been some contractual agreements or stipulations put in place, it's supposed to be for a certain amount of time to meet whatever the shortfall is, right? We're being forced into a shortfall. Right now, due to attrition, we're down 5,000 employees, right? The MTA is doing um, a little bit of hiring to make it look like they're basically replenishing our workforce, but they are not. This is an attack on our workers. Under the auspice of COVID-19, all of the funding that the MCA has requested from the federal government, they have been given, right? On the union side, we have not even guaranteed that the federal government provide um, hazard pay for our workers. We weren't even written into the CARES Act after all of the, um, the work and what we have provided for the city. Again, I will note that we in New York City Transit, at the MTA, bring in 10% of the national um, 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 budget. Budget, budget to meet their budget. So if that's the case, they need to protect our workers. It's not okay that some people can have hazard pay, but when it comes to New York City Transit employees, we're left out across the board. So my run for president of TW Local 100 is one that is necessary, and it has to happen now, because we don't have too much more that we can actually use before there will be an implosion of our local, right? So we are just in, 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 in a very dire situation and we have to continue to keep the pressure on um, and keep to educating the members, right? Because education is essential. So thank you so much for um, giving me a There was one question I did want to ask you. So working at the MTE is an, a great privilege because let's say if you have a high school diploma, like I did, right? You can come and work and you can build a life for yourself and build a home like my dad did, right? He gets a pension and all that stuff. And do you feel that the union busting now is creating... It's, it's an attack on the working class, right? Unionized labor also is leads to wealth creation, right? Helps you be able to buy a home, provide for your family and things of that nature. In, um, in Southeast Queens, the largest concentration of homeowners are unionized. That's so right. The wealth and the money that is generated in that community is coming from organized labor. So when the governor attacks us, that means that he's attacking our livelihood, our ability to exist, right? The second largest neighborhood is Central Brooklyn. And we have to ensure that our members have the ability to live and work here, right? And so, right. A, a large majority of our, of our workforce is forced out because in New York City Transit, we are treated different from the, the Long Island Railroad and the Metro North. And what we are coming for from the mayor is real wage increases, right, that meet the cost of living to live in New, in New York City and state. We are way behind when it comes to what it costs to live here in New York City. It's not enough for us to be good enough to work here, but we should also be here, be able to live here. There's no reason why our members are being forced to live in Delaware, Pennsylvania, Maryland, right? Commuting back and forth because they can't afford to live here. So, an attack on organized labor is an attack on the working class. So, 
basically I feel like all the MTA jobs should be unionized and should be permanent. Right. It shouldn't be provisional yes. because that's what our elected officials are allowing. Yes. So what do you have to say to our state assembly and state senators that approve this mess? Well, this because they appoint the board members on the MT board. Well, this comes down not only to the elected officials, it's what Mr. Murray was talking about, about the people, the power of the people, right? The people, the, the, um, the writing public, Right? It's stronger and larger than the people in power. The only, our elected officials can only move as we move. When we don't move, they don't move. We saw what we did last summer when it came to police brutality in the system due to what happened with George Floyd. When the people rose up, right, government had to answer to their constituency. And so this, my run for, for um, president is also to bring about a resurgence of the labor movement. Right, this corporate model of unionism that we're seeing happen across the board, where you have um, union presidents and heads of, of boards that are well-fed and unconcerned. Right, so there has to be a resurgence of the um, of the labor movement. Labor in this country used to be about 30, 35, 36 percent of the entire workforce. It's currently at six percent and steadily on the decline. Unions are being busted and broken daily throughout this country due to um, an orchestrated effort by the government as well, you know, along with um, the private sector and just those who no longer care. Those who fought for us um, that came into this country, a lot of them were immigrants. We know that the, the, um, the um, 